You may know about Starliner's problems, but I bet you don't know the whole story. Boeing's Starliner program has been plagued by delays for years and years. It's gotten so bad, the company is a punching bag. Notorious for the Boeing 737 crashes and scandals, it's natural to wonder what was NASA thinking in selecting them to fly their astronauts to space. Let's turn the clock back to 2014. To replace the space shuttle, NASA selected two companies. In case one provider had a problem and couldn't launch, they would still have a way to get to space. The winners were Boeing and SpaceX. Everyone expected Boeing to crush it based on their history. Boeing made the Saturn V booster, the lunar rover, and the shuttle orbiter. They were dominant in aerospace. SpaceX, as crazy as it sounds, was unproven. They were already delivering supplies to the ISS, but had never carried humans. NASA was so confident in Boeing, they gave them much less support so they could provide more oversight and support to SpaceX. That was clearly a mistake. Almost 10 years later, Boeing has a bad reputation made much worse with the 737 crashes and other quality control issues. The perception with Boeing is that profitability is more important than quality. Space always takes longer than NASA or its private partners expect or want. Despite awarding contracts in September 2014, NASA had hoped to launch American astronauts from American soil in only a few years. Since the shuttle retired, NASA had been paying the Russians $80 million for one American to fly to the ISS. The cost in dollars was small, but high in national pride. At times in the race between SpaceX and Boeing, Boeing looked like they would win the race to the ISS. SpaceX had a Crew Dragon explode during uncrewed testing due to faulty valves. They also had parachute deployment issues. Part of NASA loves SpaceX's new approach and the other part hates it. The old way of doing things is safe and comforting to this part of NASA, and this crowd definitely needed Boeing to deliver. But for years, all the company delivered was more delays. Delays are normal in the space industry. The problem for Boeing is that unlike traditional aerospace contracts, the government was paying for performance. Boeing's paycheck wasn't getting bigger the longer it took them, it was getting a lot smaller. Software problems prevented the first uncrewed demo mission from even reaching the ISS. It safely returned to Earth, but the thruster errors could have caused Starliner to hit the ISS or burn up on re-entry. SpaceX completed its crew demo mission in 2020 and its first operational mission the same year. This new space upstart, who had only launched a couple dozen times as of the 2014 award, was making human spaceflight look easy. Now the heat was really building for Boeing. Each time Starliner got close to launch, more problems would be found. Valves, flavorable tape in the electrical wiring, parachute harness weaknesses, check, check, and check. Soon cost overruns and losses joined the delays and the shareholders and executives were furious. But after all this, the Astro astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, who had been waiting years watching SpaceX designated crews fly to space. Crew 8 is currently on the ISS. Butch and Sonny were still working hard, totally determined to make Starliner a success. On June 5th, 2024, they finally launched on Starliner the first humans ever to fly the iconic Atlas V. And we all know that when the going gets tough, and it often does, the tough get going. All right, we've been Fine. here in the sim many a time. I am. Captain. One, ignition. Go. Oh, honey, we are Woo! Woo! There goes that wire. We're going. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Indeed. Yeah, we are thrilled as well. Um, I'm not sure we could have gotten a better welcome. Yeah, and I just want to say a big thanks to family and friends who 
live this <laughs> for a long time. And uh, I think you're glad we're not with you anymore. Look at them and listen to them. How excited and relieved they are. Here's NASA's Steve Stitch and Boeing's Mark Nappy at the post-docking press conference. Uh, today's docking, I think, was challenging. We ended up losing a total of five thrusters. Uh, we took a couple of actions in the software. Again, we recovered the thrusters, and they worked, they, they were working just fine during the rendezvous, except for one that we left inhibited. The helium leaks, we just have to go um, take our time to work through it and figure out how we can make the system leak tight on the ground. Uh, they had suggestions. They had improvements. Uh, they talked about things, don't change this because this works really good, and they had some just techniques. You know, this works a little bit better if you do it this way than if you do it this way. All stuff that you are not going to learn unless you go through a test flight. But we have two problems on this vehicle right now, the helium leak and figuring out how to fine-tune these thrusters. Those are pretty small, really, issues to go deal with, and we'll figure them out. In summary, if this was any other company but Boeing, Let's say Sierra Space's Dream Chaser vehicle, which also bid for crew. How would it be different? Would a new company without Boeing's heritage and baggage get the benefit of the doubt? I think so. It's time for spaceflight fans to let Boeing off the hook. NASA trusts Starliner to take crew to space. So far, so good. I don't trust Starliner as much as NASA, but I do trust NASA to make the right decision. Godspeed, Butch and Sonny. May you return safely very soon. This is Tom from Mountainless Space. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think the chances of Starliner getting an extended contract from NASA are. And while you're at it, YouTube thinks you'll like this video next.